Hey, how's it going? This is Brando from Brandlux Media and in today's video, I'm going to bring you through the exact same landing page infrastructure that we used to scale a client to over $10,000 a day in sales. We are still in the process of scaling. We will probably hit fifteen dollars to $20,000 in a single day in sales. I'll keep you updated. But guess what? When we scale and spend a lot on ads, specifically with e-commerce, right? Um, we, we tend to split test a lot of different variations. So in this video, I'm going to break down the exact structure of the landing page that we used, which is of course the winner. So you can maybe use the same structure for your own e-commerce brand. Okay. But before we get into anything as usual, let me actually show you the proof of this, you know, quick case study and let's get right into it. Now, as you can see over here, this is the, you know, the, the brand that we're working with $10,000 a day in sales. Let me just refresh. So you know this is real as usual. They're a great brand. Um, you know we're scaling them by you know 20, 30 percent. Of course, there's fluctuation. Yesterday, let me see. Yesterday was 10k, the 18th, 7k, the 17th, 6k. So like we're you know we're we're scaling them. And then of course there's ups and downs. I think the 16 was a little higher. The 15th. Might have been lower. Yeah, so between five, six, seven, and we're scaling them to over 10,000. Yesterday was, I think, our highest day so far of the month. And nothing, we're still in the process of scaling them. So let's actually go through the exact landing page that we use. So I can't show you the brand for obvious reasons, but I'm gonna show you the brand that we decided to model because FYI, guys and gals, everything that we do is literally based on frameworks that are already proven to work. So the best thing that you can do is kind of look at your competitors and what we like to do is use tools called Autria. This, this, this is an amazing tool. That I always, always talk about it in my videos and this is where we're able to basically track competitors, track landing pages. You can literally go in, into these, you know, all of these competitors and track their, uh, their landing pages, their ads, their scripts, their storyboards for the UGC videos, literally everything. So we found the brand over here and this is essentially the brand that we decided to model. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, pull over a, a Figma file because I have a, not a Figma, but you know, a free form file. I have a bunch of different things to show you over here. So make sure to stick. Uh, but look, this is the landing page. Let me just first show you and then we can go over these, you know, all of these details. As you can see, I have a bunch of notes. So make sure you stick until the end. By the way, I'm going to share this document with all these notes. It took me a while to do. Um, so, you know, I'm going to share these things as well. You just have to join my free community. It's completely free and school. There's a link below, but essentially other than sharing you these frameworks that you're seeing over here, all these, you know, really useful notes. I also share a bunch of other resources. So feel free to explore the community if you, if you're interested. Now let's go over this landing page very quickly. As you can see, it's a very user friendly page, very dynamic. Let me just zoom out a little bit. And I just love the structure of this page. And in fact, why are we even modeling this page in the first place? Well, it's very simple because they are doing, they have 600,000, 700,000, between five and 700,000 visitors per month. This is not 100% accurate, always like similar web, but it is pretty accurate, okay? So we can say plus or minus it's between five and 700, uh, you know, thousand vis visitors per month. And if that's the case, they're doing, they're doing eight figures, like 100% confident about it. And, um, and nothing. So I thought I just, you know, we just test this exact same framework. So let's go over into our free form and go over the exact infrastructure. Before I go over all these notes, I want to go over the structure of the page, kind of like the skeleton. So you have an understanding of, of what that is and how it works. And, uh, and you can use the same for your for your brand. Now, it all starts with introducing the product, right? We introduce the product, then we introduce the, the problem. Now, the, the, the reason I, I chose, you know, I, I write here, these can be switched as well is because sometimes it's always good to, it's also good to introduce the problem first, maybe have it like, you know, have an interesting hook and then introduce the product right after. So obviously there's different variations. The, the variation that we used in this example for my client and what this other, you know, uh, competitor, I guess, or, or, or brand is doing is following this infrastructure. So product introduction, prob uh, problem introduction. So we're introducing the pains, the problems uh, and potential solutions, failed solutions. And of course, ours is the best of the best, uh, right? And then we have proof. We have a statistics, uh, statistics unbiased section. And this is basically where 
we support the proof by showcasing unbiased proof based on statistics and numbers. And this, it could be like a, a medical trial, it could be, you know, anything, right? And so this cannot, of course, be uh, put into all types of brands. So if you're selling maybe some other types of products where there isn't like a statistical trial or something like that, then you can still add statistics. I'll give you an example. If you're selling like sleep, uh, sleep headbands or whatever they're called, you can maybe have statistics on how adding something that can improve your sleep, um, you know, drastically increases your, uh, your efficiency when you work because you have higher energies. And so you can have statistics just for that. So there's a bunch of different ways to do it. This is just a framework. Then after the statistics, we go out over product information, more like features, benefits, and specs, and then more information that is more just based on, on value. So we're just sharing value. Uh, so they get more familiar with the topic with, with not only what we're selling, but the solutions and the problems that other similar users are facing and just more information, more value. Then proof reviews, FAQ, guarantee, right? And then reviews. I'm gonna go through all these sections very uh, like a lot more in detail, so bear with me for just a second. But now, let's get into um, breaking down the page. Let me drink first because my voice is almost finished. Forget, don't forget to like, subscribe, whatever, do all those things. It supports the channel, of course, if you want. Now, this is the, uh, the page, okay? Let's go over it. Top of the fold. I'm gonna kind of like also read through this. It took a while to write these things, so I, I might as well just also read through it and then add a couple nuggets here and there. But overall, what you wanna do in a landing page, first of all, is make sure that you have good images over here. As you can see, they're selling a hair, less, uh, hair loss product. So they have a very professional imagery, right? Product um, pictures and product shots. This is really important, guys. Like, I cannot stress this enough. Branding, especially whether you're doing dropshipping or you have an actual brand, whatever, it doesn't actually matter. But branding your website and branding your landing pages is absolutely crucial to increase the perceived value. So there's there's a higher light and conversion rate. There's a higher likelihood that people convert and that people perceive you as the industry leader or expert or whatever it is that you're selling if you have good branding and good imagery. So if you don't, Take a step back, okay? They also have before and afters. They have like uh, images I can't show you here. Let me maybe just switch over here so you can see it. Right, before and afters, other before and afters, right? Stats, things like this, right? Just more information, reviews, right? You basically want a, a mini snapshot of your entire landing page. And by the way, like these graphics are also included down below. So you basically want an overview of your entire landing page over here. People, believe it or not, actually scroll through these images quite frequently. So it's, you know, they act as mini landing pages. So that's kind of the first comment there, which I really liked about this uh, this brand. They have a small description over here, which is fine. What you want to do here is, is showcase that your product is a solution to the problem, which is why they're on the landing page in the first place, okay? And then what I like to do here is, sorry, what I liked, what I liked uh, in this landing page specifically is they have, you know, there's typically uh, one option and then they have subscribe and save the other option, or there's just subscribe, or there's just like one time. This is a great opportunity to, to have both. And how they actually showcase it is that, let me sh switch over to, to show you, but they essentially have subscribe and save, and they have like one month su supply, three month supply. I would honestly also put a six month supply if it were to, uh, me, but they probably tested already and, and they spend millions of dollars. so. I might as just follow what they're doing, right? And then one time option where they just click over here and then there's like still one month supply and three month supply. The only difference is that they save they save 18% and 27% over here if, if it's one time and then they if they subscribe and save, it's 30% and 35%. I like this a lot. If I visually see it on this page over here, it's very easy to understand. This will not work, guys. Having multiple options will just not work if you make it very complicated to understand, meaning that they click over here and maybe they don't understand, they can't read uh, what they're getting, they don't understand what they're getting in return if they choose this or that option. So make it extremely easy to understand, like really, really simple. Now, this is what I like. Now, uh, oh, this is really good. Uh, what they have, why I like this section so much is because they have a medical doctor 
saying a comment. So at what I say here, a written review within the top section of the product page is a great way to increase authority, right? They're basically, and once again, if we can include as much information as possible on the top of the fold, that is that is great because many, many people, of course, the buyers will probably scroll, right? But many people will not read through the entire page. So this is good because you're providing proof, social proof, but especially you're increasing your authority because in this case, there is a, a high figure individual or whatever, authoritative um, individual, which is a medical doctor, saying something uh, really positive about the product. So this is a great, um, great kind of piece um, to add to or element to add to the page. This is great. One other thing that is fundamental, this is very standard for landing pages, but you know, some, some people just don't know, is that you wanna add information like what's, what is included in the bundle? How does it compare to well-known pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical brands? What's uh, scientific evidence, right? So we wanna add, I say here, fundamental is to give the users an Im immediate understanding on what is included, what is expected, the specs, features, benefits, um, uh, guarantees, and just give a level of reassurance, right? And all of these are like drop downs. Let's go over here very quickly. They're drop downs, they're good information. What's included in the bundle? You know, they also have this feature where they literally add the products. Uh, this probably requires some code, but you don't have to have it like this. I mean, this is, let's see what happens. This actually is, could be a distraction as well because it, it, it brings people to that page, but it also could, you know, could be good because maybe if they don't wanna spend on the entire hair growth routine, they maybe just wanna spend on one of these, then they will. So once again, I just trust their judgment because they spent so much and they just have very cool drop downs with all the stats, the information, and this is fundamental to have on the top of the fold and it just looks very, very neat, okay? So moving forward, this is an absolutely fundamental uh, procedure uh, or process or element to have and it's showing the proof Right, so showing proof as, as high as you can in your page is essential. So people want to see that your product actually works, whether it's quality of the product, proof of effectiveness, et cetera, it doesn't really matter. You just need to show users that other people are using the product and that it actually works. And they actually have dozens of case studies that you can scroll and literally see the before and after. So this is a fundamental structure to add or element to add right after the product introduction because you introduce the product Right, they're here for a problem. You introduce a solution to your product uh, problem, which is the product, right? And the first thing you have to do is showcase that it actually works for other people. If you put this section on the bottom, people are not gonna get hooked. And by the way, this sequence is strategically proven to make sure that they read through the entire landing page. It's strategically, strategically structured in a way that is optimized for them to read through the landing page. So bear with me for just a second. And so it's, it's really important. The next, uh, the next section over here is the statistical evidence. So adding statistical proof from trusted sources can really increase your authority, right? It, you know, it's good to have proof that your customers are using your product, but it's biased. Let's be honest, like it's biased. It could be fake, who knows, right? The, who knows who trusts companies nowadays? So what we wanna do is add an extra layer of truth, uh, of, sorry, of, <laughs> of proof and they have like user trials and they have cl clinical case studies, literally. And so it's very, very um, smart for them to do that because they can basically read a couple of case studies um, where there is actually hard earned proof. And one other thing that, yeah, so one other thing that they add is literally you can read the case study. So you can click and read their in-depth case study. Now, if you don't have a case study, you can leverage somebody else's case study. It can also be from a trusted source. Uh, and I think that this is their case. I mean, this is not their company. Yeah, this is a tr another trusted, I'm not actually not sure, but it doesn't actually matter as long as it's uh, statistically proven and there's, uh, you know, there's an actual case study. This is really important. Once again, it doesn't, you could be selling clothing and your, your sales proposition is that, uh, you know, this clothing is whatever, it's the highest quality material. And then so you maybe have a, a case study showcasing that it's the actual truth and that you're, you're sourcing products from the best of the best uh, countries in the world where the, the, the quality of the, the material or whatever it is that you're selling is the highest. So it doesn't have to be specifically about this. You get my point. I'm just trying to give you a framework here. Okay, so this works very well. Once again, we want unbiased proof 
right? So people can trust us for an extra reason. Now this uh, section over here, I would honestly also have added maybe on the top of the fold just to give immediate social proof that we've been featured, uh, it works, these are the trusted partners or whatever featured in XYZ. It's great, I honestly like how it's also positioned here, but I would also maybe add it on the top as something that scrolls. And I think it, they also have a scrolling section. Yeah, there it is. Great, I love it, very visually appealing, I love it. Good, now this is where we start to be a little more technical. Now, the reason why I wouldn't have this uh, ingredient section more on the top is because if we just overwhelm people, um, if we overwhelm people with all these specific ingredients and why they should learn about these ingredients on the top, it gets confusing because they don't even know if they want the product in the first place. They're probably not even sold. They're not sold. And so what we wanna do is have this framework where we introduce the product, we show them the proof, we show them the unbiased proof, we give them even more social proof, and then we explain them. Look, now since we literally prove to you in seven different ways that you have to listen to us and that this is a product for you, now you can get, you can dive deeper into like what the product actually contains, what are the ingredients, right? So this is really important, I love this section. And the good thing is that you can, you can actually read more and go more in depth. Some people, you, you always, what I advise you to do is always give that extra option because some people are readers, some are not. What I would also add here is maybe have a quick demonstrational video of somebody like demoing the product and speaking about the ingredients. Once again, some people are very visual, some people just wanna read, some people just wanna look at a video, right? So give options, give options. Now, what, one other thing that is important here uh, that I love about this section is that this is like a, a step-by-step -step section that provides value, right? And what, how does it provide value? Well, because it talks about the causes, right? It provides information. It talks about the solutions, right? Potential solutions, and it talks about the results, right? What you can expect in terms of results. So we're educating the customer and giving the customer expectations, right? Again, why would, why would I, you know, this is potentially a section that I, I, we could add also more on the top, uh, probably even higher uh, over this, Right, I would if I if it were me, I would test this section over here because people are more likely to want to learn more about the cause and the solution and the results before they maybe understand about the ingredients. The ingredients are there. You can also list the ingredients more on the top. I think they have done this. Yeah, they haven't, but I I would put like ingredients over here as well, just because if some people are interested, they can read it on the top instead of just scrolling all the way through. Um, but yeah, so this is great. Let me just show you on the page over here. Uh, yeah, the cause. And so they have good visuals and good uh, gifts um, to, to, to showcase and inform and educate the user on what is the actual cause of them losing the hair, what is actually happening, right? And then they have the solution, which is of course, you know, recommending their product and then the, the expected results and more statistics right? More stats. I like this section a lot. Now, the, moving forward, now that we have, just to recap, presented the problem, presented the product, pre presented the proof, presented the unbiased proof, more social proof and authority, effectiveness with the ingredients, right? More information and value about the product. Now it's time to really d dive deeper into like, you know what, this also works for others, right? We want to, we introduce the, the proof over here, Right, but it's always good practice on, on the top over here, but it's always a good practice to introduce the proof at least two to three times within a landing page. So this, in this case, it's the second time. I like this section a lot because you can actually read through, first of all, it links them to uh, their full reviews, which is also good. Uh, many people don't do this, and, and so what ends up happening is that the customer just reads maybe two or three re reviews, but they actually miss all of the hundreds of reviews that you might have, uh, you, you might have, but they, they just don't scroll through the entire landing page because typically the reviews are more on the on the bottom, right? So they have a section to just see the reviews immediately. These are like small things. It's not a break it or make it type of deal, but you know, it's like it, it helps overall. Adding small pieces all combined actually help with conversion rate. I mean, we, we've tested a lot at this point, and so I like this section a lot. Um, it, you know, it adds social proof even more. And now this is the golden section, guys, the FAQ. The FAQ section, along with the review section, are essentially where you answer all of your customers' objections. If you, if you, uh, so 
if people go on your landing page and they have even one single half a question in their mind, they're just not going to buy. It's just like psychologically, they will not be triggered to buy. They need to, they need to be 100% sold, even if it's a $5 product. So what we want to do here is add between 10 and 15. I wouldn't do more than 15, honestly, because then it becomes really just a, an article, right? So 10 and 15 of the most important questions and uh, kind of like, if you don't know what to put in here, just look at your competitor and look at the reviews and kind of understand what their questions are or what their concerns are. Or maybe just look at their FAQ as well and, and kind of compare it with yours. Get inspiration from somebody else. In our scenario, we got inspiration from this brand in terms of how it's structured, but make sure that you answer all of their objections and go into detail. Let me just show you how that page looks like, their FAQ looks like. But they, they dive deeper into answering these questions right? I would also add things like shipping. Is it fast shipping? When can I expect my product refunds? I don't know. I'm not sure if they added things here. I would also add maybe a couple more um, of these things because it's, you know, people want to know these things, shipping, delivery, expected delivery, guarantees and refunds and how that works over there. Um, but look, there's also another section over here where they talk about refunds. So that's good. Um, and this is really, really strong because once again, once we've convinced people but that this is our product, we want to make it a no brainer, right? To actually take action. And they have a, what I like to call a clinically, uh, a clinically backed guarantee because 150 days is typically like, it's not typical. That's what I meant to say. There's typically 30 day guarantee, 60 day guarantee or whatever, but they have 150 they guarantee, which is very, very specific to the trial that they were running, right? So to refresh your mind, they run a clinical trial and it proved that within 150 days, X amount or like 97% of people actually saw an increase in, in, in hair growth or something like that. So they're saying to make it a little more interesting, if you don't see results within 150 days, then you can ask a refund as long as you do these three simple steps. That's all we ask for. So this is reassuring the customers that they have literally nothing to lose. They have zero risk. If it doesn't work, they get a refund. If it works, they grow their, their hair back, okay? So this is good. Now, this section over here, I would personally add this, um, as I see here, add this section more towards the top. However, this could be a great opportunity to remind people how to use the product again once they get to the bottom, right? So this is a demonstrational product, how to use the hair growth routine. I would also just honestly add it more towards maybe over here. Um, but as I said in the quote in my text on the left, it could also be an opportunity to just remind people and say, okay, we've gone through the FAQs, we've gone through the guarantee. How do we actually do this again? Boom, reminder. And so there's a quick demonstrational video. I would add this video on the top over here. Whoops, what's going on? Over here, I would add it over here or just embed it somewhere around here. Maybe also embed it over here, how it actually works. They click and then they see a video or something like that. Now, these are just my comments. Once again, at the end of the day, we actually just kind of copied the, the structure and it's working quite well. And this is essentially, and then they have reviews. Now, the only thing, the only comment that I would add here is that they don't have a lot of before and afters. They don't have UGC reviews. They don't have the human interaction, they, they literally have just comments or, or reviews, which is okay, it still works. But it's a lot better if you actually add UGC elements. I'll give you an example. Let's see if we can find somebody else here. Right? Like this, something like this. It, it's, it's actually quite easy to add. And what one other thing that I like about this brand is that they actually have kind of like small little surveys based on the objections that most people have. And so what if I write a review over here, I can literally rate different things. How would you rate the effectiveness? Excellent or very good, right? How would you rate the speed of results? Very good, excellent, right? And then there's a couple extra questions. And so what ends up happening is that you get, uh, you essentially answer your prospects or users objections just by them looking at these average results. And as you can see, most of these questions are important. How is, is the product effective, right? And so, you know, the prospect sees that most people are saying yes, 10 out of 10. And so visually, 
right? A combination between this and the combination between actually seeing people, real people that are, are receiving the product or them showing the product on a, with, a, with a quick selfie style video or, or image, all of these things really matter. So this is the only thing that would probably add to, um, to this section over here. Overall, this is a proven page. It's working also well for us. We've, we've modeled a very similar infrastructure. Let me know if you have any questions. Whoop. Let me know if you have any questions on this. Uh, I know that I, I went through and ranted through a couple things. Uh, so yeah, just let me know if you, if you have any questions, if you have any future recommendations for other videos. I love speaking about landing pages. And by the way, if you want uh, templates, like done for you templates, feel free to join my paid community where we literally, uh, it's, it's on school, it's up to you. We share a bunch of resources. We have two calls every week. Um, mo probably more like three calls every week uh, in, in the next probably couple of weeks. And we share, we have courses, modules, and we share a bunch of different things, including some landing page templates uh, similar to these, where you can just drag and drop into your page builder and it's literally installed um, into your um, into your page fly or whatever page builder you're using, okay? So either way, I hope you got value from this video and with no further ado, that's it. Subscribe, like, ring the bell do all those things and see you in the next one. All right, bye.